The, the first World for Social Forum took place in Brazil in, to, in January 2001. And the decision to launch it was taken only a few months before. Uh, and this is how it happened. Uh, I was in Paris at the time. I was a director general of Le Monde Diplomatique and I received two Brazilian comrades and friends, Chico Whitaker and Odette Grajev, and they, 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 they were returning from Davos. And they were shocked, of course, by Davos. And they said to me, uh, well, we should do something against Davos, organize a sort of counter Davos. And I said the year before, and Samir was there too, the World Forum for Alternatives had organized a sort of counter Davos in Davos. But uh, it's nearly impossible to, have an, to organize anything in, uh, in a such a small city with uh, hundreds of uh, grandees of all sorts and the Swiss police. But we did it. And the year after, the year after then in 2000, uh, I said to Odette and Chico, well, it's ridiculous to organize something in, in Switzerland or, in, or even in France because we are in the same continent. If we really want to do something different, it must be uh, some, somewhere in the world, but not in Europe or in, in the United States. And I said, uh, well, uh, when we examine the different possible countries, the one which seems best appropriate is Brazil. Why Brazil? Because of the existence of popular movements, of a party, uh, of the PT, uh, of many organizations. And in Brazil, where? I suggested Porto Alegre. It could have been Belo Horizonte or Sao Paulo or any other city, but it just happened that I had studied the participatory budget of Porto Alegre and I thought that it was a, a, symbolic, a good symbol to organize something in the cit a city where they had put in practice uh, this participatory budget. And we decided that the, at, at that stage that the forum should call itself World Social Forum as opposed to the World Economic Forum of Davos. So it began as an anti-Davos outfit. And then our Brazilian comrades organized themselves. I went to Brazil several times afterwards. And finally, they did it. And I'm, it, it was really uh, extraordinary because the decision taken in May for a, a World Social Forum uh, found its uh, outcome, its result, in January 2001. So at the beginning, it was an anti-Davos. In Davos, we have bankers or banksters, uh, governments, uh, businessmen, all sorts of men. And they meet not only in Davos, but in uh, many other venues. But there was, no, there was at the time no existing space for social movements of the whole world, organizations, students to meet. So the forum, the forum was a forum of organizations, not of individuals. There were individuals, but as members of organizations, which is totally different from the Occupy movement. And uh, when you ask, you ask me about the, the relationship with politics, so w when we said it, would, it might be in Porto Alegre in January, of course, the, the, all the Brazilians who formed the organizing committee were members or close to the, the PT. Uh, but they, when they didn't have the, the backing of the PT. They, they, they were members of the, of the Saint, uh, CUT, of uh, uh, the, the, the Mouvement des Santerres, etc. So when the, the idea pro progressed, Lula, who was not president at the time, not yet, uh, asked, to, asked me to come and meet him because he wanted to know exactly what we meant with the social forum. Would it be against the party, against the PT, or not? Uh, and I gave him the example of ATTAC, which was, at the time I was president of ATTAC, France. Uh, I explained to him how we functioned. Uh, that is a, a social movement which makes proposals. 
which doesn't intend to replace parties, uh, which, is, which acts on a different sphere, in a different sphere. And he understood fairly well, and he, he, gave, he, he gave us the green light. We uh, were saying with Eric, had, if we hadn't had the green light of the, of the, PT, of the Lula of PD, we could have organized it anyway. And if not in Porto Alegre, in some other city of, the, of Brazil, or perhaps in Mexico or another country. But it was better to have the PT with us, though they kept at a distance. They, they provided the city of Porto Alegre and the government of Rio Grande do Sul provided considerable uh, financial and logistical assistance. Uh, without them, it would have been much more difficult. But they did help, but they didn't try uh, and that's uh, much to their credit. They didn't try to influence, to say we want this or that. No, they, they left us alone. There was sufficient confidence with them, between them and us, for, uh, for them not to try to, to, to manage, to control everything. Uh, but of course, uh, in, during the forum, uh, Lula, uh, was invited in several uh, round, not round tables, because they were in, they was in, in an immense uh, room. Uh, there was in Gigantino, which is a gymnasium which can accommodate 20,000 persons. Uh, he was one of the, of the, if not the leading star of the forum, but keeping uh, a distance as a party from the social movements. It was a bit complicated, because uh, in the PT, not everyone uh, uh, there were disagreements within them. Uh, some, uh, some were closer to the leadership, others were less close, but we managed and it started like that. And uh, uh, one phrase I often use is the following, referring to Aldo Moro's, uh, the, the Italian prime minister who was assassinated by the Red Brigades, when he said once uh, that between the Communist Party the Italian Communist Party and the and Christian democracy, there should be parallel convergences. Normally, parallels never converge. But you can have on on one on the one hand social movements who advocate this or that measure, and on the other hand, in a parallel way, so political parties which go in the same direction, each in his its own separate line. And I think this could apply as well to the Occupy movement, but we will discuss that later.